Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 24th of June, 2011. 73 years ago this day, a 450 ton meteorite entered the Earth's atmosphere, exploded, and the remnants landed near Chikora in Pennsylvania. Coincidentally, in three days' time, an asteroid, unimaginatively named 2011 MD, will pass very close to the Earth. It's only 15 meters across, but at cosmic speeds that would have made a fairly large dent if it had hit us. However, before you get alarmed, there is no chance of that happening. The sun has remained relatively quiet for the last 24 hours, with only a few small B flares to give us some small encouragement that activity will increase in the near future. The B flares have come from growth in a couple of the active regions on the disk. Region 1236 is actually showing some signs of new spots forming around it, but it will soon be over the west limb and lost to us. Region 1239 last night had all but disappeared. There are a couple of small spots there now, but I don't think that will be with us for lo much longer. The region to the east of them in the northern hemisphere has not yet been numbered, but is actually beginning to grow relatively steadily. And region 1240 shows some minor signs of growth as well. However, as all the new spots are relatively small, it's really hard to see them on either the Sunspot movie or the Magnetic movie from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. As the sunspots are small and the magnetic field is weak, I'm not expecting any major flares coming from these newly growing regions. Unless, of course, they become a lot more dynamic than they are at the moment. The transition and coronal movies show that the sun is at least a bit more dynamic than it has been the last couple of days, but it's still not producing anything particularly spectacular. We can see the first evidence of a region coming over on the southeast limb, but no sign of anything particularly major on the northeast limb as yet. If we could look at the Soho coronagraph data, we can see that there's a faint coronal mass ejection towards the end of the sequence. But is that heading towards the Earth or away? To determine that, we have to turn to the stereo data, and in this case I'm going to use the stereo ahead data, which means the Earth is going to be on the left in the movie sequence. And you can see that indeed the coronal mass ejection is aimed towards the Earth, not away. So we have another coronal mass ejection heading our way. The ACE data shows that we've not yet been affected by that coronal mass ejection, but are still under the influence of that high-speed coronal wind stream that I talked about yesterday. NOAA, in the meantime, has dropped the chance of a major geomagnetic storm to only 30%, so the coronal mass ejection may slip by unnoticed. In the meantime, the auroral zone looks fairly agitated, probably due to the effect of this high-speed uh, solar wind stream, and the KP index, though it's quieted down a bit, is still on the high side of quiet, varying between 2 and 3. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 47, the x-ray background remains at B1, the intensity of the radio sun is at 96 solar flux units, very similar to yesterday, solar wind speed is at 600 kilometers per second with a density of just over one proton per cubic centimeter, and the KP index is rated as quiet. I'm not going to change my forecast from yesterday, but C flares in the next 24 hours are possible, but M and X flares are highly unlikely. The sunspot number will remain relatively low, though might increase a little bit with this new growth. Coronal mass ejections remain likely, and we still have the chance of that geomagnetic storm, although it's getting past that window that, was, that Noah claimed yesterday. Over the next few days, we should expect a few minor regions coming over the northeast and the southeast limb, but there seems to be nothing particularly spectacular there. And from looking at the stereo data, there doesn't seem to have been very many flares in those regions of late. If you want more details about what's going on in the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today, then go to my channel, they're all listed there, along with some of my global warming videos. If you want more details about the asteroid, go to spaceweather.com, where they have a very detailed description of the encounter. If you want to find out whether the Sun has been getting more or less active over the last three months, go back to some of my earlier videos on The Sun Today. If you go back to the 4th of April, that's three rotations ago, you'll see that we were worrying about the aftermath of a large, long-duration event, very similar to the one that we had a couple of days ago. Similarly, on the 1st of May, we were also talking about long-duration events and coronal mass ejections. However, on the 28th of May, we had had a long period of low activity, just like we're having now, but a new region appeared over the east limb and produced a whole string of sea flares. Will that happen again? It seems unlikely, but history may repeat itself. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.